So anyway, all right, well, we're going to get started with this. I guess, Luke, you're recording everything, all right, for quality assurance. Uh, and we're going to open up our Bibles to Revelation chapter 9. And I just, you know, I couldn't get it off my mind. I, I am going to get back to Acts chapter 8 sometime. But it's just, I, I thought about this after I did the angelic, the angelology series. I thought about that, and I thought, you know what? I saw these creatures, and I was like, I really need to talk about these. I believe it's important to to kind of talk about some of these creatures. And um, because they are real, they're in the Bible, God defines them. Also, there's two other ones that I want to talk about that are in the Old Testament that are women. They're female. And they're female devils is what they are. They come in the, the yes, they come in the form of females. So I'll probably include that in next week's broadcast. But they are, so you have to understand, There's Satan has this, this male female opposites uh, type of a situation going on always, which is the same as witchcraft. It's opposite, as is above, so is below. All those those cus- those uh, uh, those doctrines that he teaches, all those teachings. Now, this is the same way. What you're going to notice about this is remember when we talked about the heavenly beast in heaven? We just talked about them last week. Well, those heavenly beasts are the living beast. The Bible never says these are the living. They are from the dead. That's where they're from. And I think it's important for us because it's in the Bible, number one. So it's impo- always important for us to understand these things. But these are not Chinese people. I just want to start preface this by saying these are not Asian people. These are not helicopters. Yeah, these are not helicopters that they're describing. What's that? They're not black helicopters that they're describing. So John Walford and all of the pre-trib movement is going to be mad at me, but that's okay. They already have been for a while. Um, Jack Van Empey is in heaven, hopefully. Um, probably. These are not black helicopters. These are actually hybrids. And because last time I checked, helicopters do not come from hell. But, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, I, I, I'm fairly sure that there's not a helicopter factory in hell. I'm fairly sure about that. Is anybody else with me on that? Is anybody else with me that, that there's probably not a helicopter factory? I know we, we're competitive, you know, and we, you know, we, we want to get cheap labor, but I don't think, I don't think there's a helicopter factory in hell. So I'm going to rule that one out and say I don't think I don't think the pre-tribbers were right about those being black hawks and tomahawks and whatever other hawks they have. Uh, but they're, I don't think they're right about that. So I, I'm going to show you what I believe the Bible, what the Bible does say. I'm going to show you what the Bible says. We're going to walk through this chapter, and you're going to kind of see how these are, uh, how these beasts are, these creatures from the underworld, I call them. And I call them hybrids from hell. You say, why do you call them that? Because they are. They're creatures from the underworld, and they're... They're hybrids from hell. That's what they are. It's where they come from. That's where I believe they're being made. I believe they're being produced, and I'm going to show you why I believe that. A couple things. Anyway, so does that make sense so far? All right, probably not, but that's okay. You'll get it in a second here. All right, it's making sense, Dad. All right, sorry to blow your, your theory, the, the theory that they were Chinese men that were crossing over. And that they were grasshoppers that are they were tomahawks. Or what are they called? Not tomahawks, blackhawks. What are they? Yeah, whatever, Apaches. And they're not Indians either. They're really not. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that we can go through it. Help us now, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Revelation chapter nine. Now we this is off the back of what we were talking about really last week with angelology. We we kind of we kind of separated off and and talked about that for a while. And as we first start this, you'll notice this picture right here. There's something falling from heaven, and we're going to talk about that. There's something falling from heaven, and that's the bottomless pit. It's falling into a pit, and and the Bible says here in Revelation chapter nine, and the fifth angel sounded. I think that number five is interesting. It's a number for death. Only. This chapter is very unique. It's like a paradox. Why is it a paradox? The reason this chapter is a paradox is because none of these things follow the rest of Scripture and what they do. So what I mean by that is these people want to die, and they can't die. And that number five really represents death, and they want to die, but God doesn't let them die. He doesn't allow them to die. And what he tells these 
what he allows these uh, creatures to do is opposite to what they normally do. But they are from hell. They're not from heaven. So they're from the underworld. That's where they're from. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven under the earth. And to him, do you see that star? It says it's a him. Remember when we talked about the stars are angels? Remember we talked about that? This star is a, a him. All right? So it's an angel. It's something falling from heaven. Let me just tell you something. I'm going to show you in the scriptures. It's not a good thing for anything that falls from heaven. <laughs> it's just not good. Every time something falls from heaven like that, it's a bad thing. Yeah, it's a bad thing. And for whatever fell, it's bad. It's bad, okay? And this is bad. Um, but not actually for us. I'm going to get to that too. I'm going to show you some things tonight. But for this earth, it is bad. All right. Job talked about something. In Job chapter 26, verse number 5, he said, Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. I think he was talking about these things. I, ex I absolutely believe he was talking about these. Under the waters, all the way under the waters, he says, dead things are formed there. What are they? I think they're these things. I think they're being formed there right now. Right. Yes, exactly. And the inhabitants thereof. That is what? The bottomless pit. That's where it is. That's what's going on. Job, I believe, is talking about the bottomless pit. I, I absolutely believe that's what he's saying. Now, turn to Luke chapter 8. Let's go there. Luke chapter 8. This is a place where the devils did not want to go. All right, remember that? Luke chapter 8, in verse number 28. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. He, he didn't want Jesus to torment him. Why? Because he's going to be in torment for all of eternity. He's telling him now, don't, don't torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Remember what happened with the devil in the wilderness and Jesus? Remember who won in the wilderness? Jesus. Think about that one. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Where's the deep? Right there. That's that bottomless pit. They're like, we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. Hast thou come to, to torment me before the time? What's the time? Yeah, the time when they're judged. They don't want to go there. They don't want to go where these creatures are coming up out of. They don't want to go there, but they're going to. They just didn't want to go there right now. Now let's look at Revelation chapter 9 as we see this here. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven under the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. He has a key. He's an angel. He's cast out of heaven, and he has a key. I believe this is Satan. I believe that this is Lucifer. I believe there are, are many examples I'm going to show you tonight where I believe that's who this is. He has a key, and he's going to unlock that bottomless pit. See, he can go to and fro, walking up and down in it. He can do that any time, but he can't unlock the pit until he has the key. And he hasn't been given the key yet. When he's given the key, it says here, and I saw a star fall from heaven under the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. He's going to be given that key. He hasn't been given it yet. Yes. Yeah, because he has all authority. Jesus has all authority. Death into hell, that's right. So he had to give him the key to go down there and unlock that because it hasn't happened yet, but it will happen. And when it does, you know how that saying goes, all hell's going to break loose? Well, that's not a lie, and it's not using it wrong because it really is going to. Because when you unlock that, oh, it's going to get nasty. It's going to get nasty, but it's nothing we need to be afraid of, just for everybody else. Jesus said this. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Didn't he? He said that. He said, he said I beheld Satan. Why? Because Christ is from eternity. So he already knows that 
I mean, time is nothing. He he knows the end of it. He knows he knows he knows all of it. Yeah, it's it's nothing. He's God, so it does that doesn't. There's no that there's no uh, time frame for him in that sense. He submitted himself to time when he was here, but he is the eternal Son of God. Amen. Forever God. Now let's go to Job. I think this is interesting. Job chapter one verse number sixty. Remember, I told you that things that fall from heaven don't. That's not good. It's usually bad. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. What happened here? Well, we know that Satan was allowed to firebomb Job's family, right? And he killed them. What was that? That's a picture of that fire, that falling from heaven. Same thing. It's going to fall, and woe to the inhabitants of the earth when he does. That's what the Bible says. When he comes, woe. Because see, when he's cast down and he's given that key, yeah, he's got that key to the underworld. He locks the underworld, but he don't get to go back up. And that's why he's going to be mad as hell. No pun intended. For real. He's going to be. Exactly, because he can't leave now. He's grounded. He's not going to be able to leave and go back into heaven. He can't. Ascend above the the height, the stars. He can't do that anymore. When he's cast down, he's cast down. That's right. He ain't getting back up. Right. And that's what's going to make him angry because he's the prince of the power of the air. But then he's going to be, but he said, I will cast, I'm going to make you like a man. You're going to be, you're going to be down there. You're not going to be able to do anything. So this is, this is, I believe this is a picture of him falling. It's the same thing. Same exact thing. Isaiah chapter 14, I believe Jesus, I believe Isaiah is, is recounting or prophesying about what is going to happen that God said. This is the lamentation. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which is weak in the nations? He will be cut down to the ground. He will fall out of heaven, Right? Now, we know that he's going to be cast out. We know there's going to be a war. We know he's, but he's going to fall. I mean, it's going to, he's not, he hasn't experienced this yet. When it does happen and he loses that power there, he's going to unleash all the power that he has here. That's what's going on. That's what's happening with this. That's how this, that's how you have to understand this. That's why all of these things are going to happen. Then Matthew 24, verse number 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. Look, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Shaken what? Shaken out. No more. We're going to get to that verse. Yep. Yep. We're getting to that one next. But that's exactly what's going to happen. They are going to be shaken out. So, and it says the powers. Remember, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places. They are going to be cast down. They are going to fall from heaven. No more to go up. That's why it's going to be all hell on earth. Because hell is coming up. And those those fallen angels are going down. This is the battlefield. This is the war, this is the place of war. That's what's going to happen. Revelation 6:13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. Was that the verse you're going to use? Okay. When she is shaken of a mighty wind, the Holy Ghost is going to blow him right out of the place. Get out of here. He's with the wind going to blow him out of heaven. That rushing mighty wind. Kick him out. And they're going to fall. And they're all going to fall. And that's why it's going to get weird around here. That's why it's going to get weird.
Well, they might be the ones that are breeding these other ones down there, these things. We're only going to get to the first part of these beasts this week. The second part, of, there's two different beasts that are in Revelation chapter 9. There's two different sets. The first one we're going to get to, next week we'll get to the second half of them because we're not going to have enough time to get there. I don't want to take that much. It's a lot to do. This took enough time for me to put together, so we're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna pace ourselves here through this. But do you see now these are things that fall. So all of these things are things that fall from heaven. I believe, And all these things represent Lucifer, and I believe the only one that gets the key is him. He's going to get the key. Yeah, it is. Right. Right. He's the one that fell. So Isaiah chapter 14, this was in his heart. So God's going to give it to him. Now, you have to understand something. As we go, I'm going to explain that to you, that all the judgment that they get is everything they want to do to everybody else. The, the same instruments are going to be used. So I got to keep going. There arose a smoke out of the pit and the smoke of a great furnace. Now, I'm going to try this. I hope this works. Let me see. Because I didn't put it in my slides on purpose. Those are horsies, but those are for later. I know you like them, Jessica and, and Dave, but just see if I can get this to work on here. This didn't work last time right there. Let me start it here. Amen. I'll like them then, too. This is Pompeii. I want you to see this. Remember the verse. The fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven. He opened the bottomless pit and rose smoke out of the pit. It's hard to see with the light. I wish we could shut these off. Can we? Let me just back this up a little bit so you can see it easier. Just that one. That's perfect. There. Night, night. Yeah. I want you to notice this smoke. How dark it gets. This is in the middle of the day. Exploded. But you notice the smoke in the darkness. Now think about the text that we just read, that we just, and you'll see the smoke, you see the darkness. This is what's going to happen when he, when that star falls from heaven and he takes that key and he unlocks hell, bottomless pit. That's what that is. Right. By the way, that's a really neat video, so you might, you might want to watch it with your family. There's, there's totally nothing wrong with it. It's just a... It's a uh, CGI. Um, it's it's really it's really neat. It shows you the entire thing of what happened there um, in Pompeii. So anyway, I, I recommend watching it. it. It was pretty good. I saw it uh, last night. Anyway, uh, there rose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. Revelation chapter nine verse number two. So that's that great furnace. What you just saw is similar to what's going to happen. I mean, there's going to be that darkness, that blackness, all covered up in the middle of the day. That's how it's going to be. And, I mean, it's, it's going to be more intense than that, obviously. But that just gives you a little visual aid. As he, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. That's what's down there. The smoke of hell, that's what's down there. And that's going to, when he unlocks that, that's what's coming up with them. Yeah. Amen. Make sure you're saved by the grace of God. You've been born again. Amen. Trust in Christ as your Savior. And there came out of smoke, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, these are that's a picture of those locust scorpions. Now, obviously, it's not going to be perfect because we don't know. We haven't seen them. But as you can see, they don't look very pleasant. Not very, they look, they, they're mad. They are mad, right? They've been waiting a long time for this, and they're finally going to get their shot, you know, to come up and cause some damage. 
Revelation chapter 9, verse number 3, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, we're going to look at scorpions. We're going to look at a few things. And we're going to do some comparisons of uh, scorpions and locusts and a few other things to show you what the Bible is trying to teach us here about these beings. These, these are the, okay, I didn't have time to do this. I should have thought about it. Maybe next week I will. I didn't think about it. Well, I did actually, but it's the other creatures that I wanted to show you some. But in Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics, in all, in, in all of these other hieroglyphics and all these other finds out there that they have, they have depictions of beasts like this, and everybody says, oh, those were just fake. They weren't real. Like, none of those things were real. I mean, none of, and then you read in the Bible where the Bible describes beasts like this, and, you, and everybody's like, well, those aren't real. Well, what were those Egyptians drawn? I mean, were they just, like, why were they drawn? <laughs> why were they worshiping them? Yeah, why were they worshiping them? Why, why did they model things after them? And why does God's word tell us that these things are going to come up out of the pit? Well, because they are. That's why. If you believe in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, then you believe that, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. You believe that too, right? Just like I believe the virgin birth. That's right, and the resurrection from the dead. I got to believe this too. If I don't, I got a problem with my believer. Right? Because I either believe all of it, or why believe it at all? Scorpions' power. Well, African scorpions are deadly. Their potency in their sting is de- it's enough to kill a man. Now remember, these things are only like this big. They're not, a lot of them aren't even that big. Little ones, that's right. Pain, what do they cause? Pain, numbness, tingling in, an area, in the area stung, and swelling. Now you're talking about one that size, not one the size of a big man. Beast. Thing. Right, now a little scorpion hurts bad. We're, we're going to show you some more things here. Now, who knows this guy? Mortal Kombat, yeah. Mortal Kombat. Anybody, anybody ever play Mortal Kombat? Well, don't play it. Anyway, but if you did play it, like a heathen Ryan, um, you, you basically, uh, right, Ryan? But uh, I did too, Ryan. I played it. I usually beat people with that guy. Um, anyway, who knows? I'd be preaching about it uh, against him like, like 20 years later. But, um, anyway, you see that they made a scorpion man. They call him scorpion. He takes that hook and he sticks it and he stings it with it. He pulls him in. Right. Yeah. Think about that. But do you understand, do you find it interesting that there's fire around him? That, that there's always fire or there's, there's something, the elements, they got the, Where'd this guy come from? I'm going to show you where he came from. Right here. It tells you where he came from. You know what? These games aren't harmless. Ouch. Dave, these games aren't harmless. I played these games. Man, I didn't think there was no big. I mean, they just were like imagination and fun. And Well, shame on you. Anyway, um, <laughs> what it says here is the hell spawned specter. You know what a specter is? It's a spirit. It's a ghost. They're admitting what this guy is. They're telling you where he came from. Why is this important? Because that scorpion came up out of the earth. That's why. And they're telling you that story. And I played those video games when I was a kid, and I had no idea. I mean, I didn't pay attention to none of that. Right? The hell spawn specter rises from the pits. After learning of Sub-Zero's return, he again stalks the ninja assassin, following him into the dark realm of the outworld where he continues his own unholy mission. Did you play that one, Lee? You didn't play video games when you were a kid. You were a farm boy. They didn't play video games. Your video game was like a real tractor. And playing with manure. What's that? Pac-Man. <laughs> no virtual harvest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. But those power of those scorpions, right? That what do they cause? Uh, difficulty breathing. I want you to imagine this for five months. These people feeling, <gasps> feeling like they're gasping for air and they're going to die, yet they can't die. Could you imagine spending five months like that, being stung by something like that? Literally spending five months breathing like that. And you can't die. 
Muscle muscle twitching or thrashing. Unusual head, neck, and eye movements. I've I've seen those two before. They they said they were cold, but I didn't believe them. Um, <laughs> now that I look back, I think they're a devil. Um, anyway, sweating and drooling. Babies do that, but that doesn't count. They haven't been stung by. <laughs> Nausea and vomiting. High blood pressure. Accelerated heart rate or irregular heartbeat. Now, some of you might be thinking right about now, I think I got stung by one of these. No, this is not WebMD. All right, this is not, this is not, I'm not, you're not Googling your symptoms right now. All right, that's not what this is. <laughs> Restlessness or excitability or inconsolable crying for five months. Five months. Think about that. Right, sleep deprivation, and they can't die. Yeah, and anger, can't breathe, all that. The wind does make you mad here sometimes. Imagine the size difference, though. A normal-sized scorpion sting versus a man-sized creature like that, uh, that we don't know exactly how big it is, but it's big. It's a very big creature. And the difference in the potency of the of the of the venom that comes out of them. Like, think about that. How how bad would that hurt? And that's how bad God hates sin. And that's and, and their rebellion even shows even more how much they hate God. Right? That's right, the sting of death. So look at the difference. Here you have this. Huge, nasty thing. And then you have these little scorpions here. And this thing can kill you. The, the, little, the little one can kill you. But this thing has the power to kill you, but God's not going to let you die. They're going to go through that. And they're going to feel that, no matter what. And they can't die. Right? Yes, it is worse. So let's look at locusts in the Bible first, because they say these are locusts, right? And they have power, like this, but they're like a scorpion, right? So let's look at Exodus chapter 10. And you'll start to see a pattern here of what, of what locusts really do. Because I think it's important to understand that these people are going to be devour the, These creatures from the underworld are going to be, they're going to be devouring people, not land. But you can see exactly what these creatures are capable of. They're a picture of a plague. Those locusts are. Okay, they're a type of a plague, uh, just like the, the scorpions are, which we'll get to. But Exodus chapter 10, verse number 4. Else if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into thy coast, and they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth. I'm going to show you where that's happening right now somewhere. Right now, today, it's happening. And they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill the houses and houses of all thy servants and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. Verse number 12. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail hath left. See, I want you to notice something, though. There's a pattern here. The world is being judged. God's people aren't. This is the world being judged. You say, well, how, look, if you're post-trib, how in the world do you think that you're not going to go through all this? Well, God said we would. God said that he, that was for the world. Right? He said, just like in Israel, or just like in Egypt, when they had 11 plagues in Egypt, which we're going to talk about that number 11 tonight, uh, 11 plagues in Egypt, but what happened to the Israelites? Nothing. Yeah, exactly. That's what they had. So Exodus chapter 10, the, the Bible illustrates that over and over again. God is able to selectively judge people. In case you haven't figured that out, I have. <laughs> he, he, can, he's, he, he can chastise you, and he can... Let everybody else go. Um, 
It's definitely possible. All right, Second Chronicles, let's go there. Chapter 6. These are judgment. That's what these are. Solomon said, if there be dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be a blasting or mildew, locusts or caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer, what supplication soever shall be made of any man. Okay, so what is he talking about? He's talking about a plague that hits them. He's talking about these locusts. That's what he's talking about, that they devour. All right? Uh, I thought it was interesting. Remember now, these are the opposites, right? These, these creatures are the opposites. They're, they're not quite the same as the ones that are on this earth. They're not quite the same as the locusts. Why? Look at Proverbs 30. Because the locusts of the earth are a little bit different. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth, all of them, by bands. But these locusts are going to have a king. The ones in Revelation chapter 9 are going to have a king. Don't you remember what the Bible says about that? That they have a king over them, Apollyon? We're going to get to that tonight. Apollyon, he's their king. Right? Yep, Abaddon. But here's, here's a picture of this, what's going on right now. This is from January 24th, 2020. A plague of locusts attacking crops in the Horn of Africa. That, yeah. Now you think about that. Only these locusts are going to be going after people. Because their command is not given to, it, their, their command is to leave the land alone. It's the people. It's the people. Now, scorpions in the Bible. The Bible talks about them too. De uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. You're going to see again, they're a, si they're a sign of the plague. Judgment. They stand for judgment and disorder, which we're going to talk about. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verse number 15. I think this is an awesome verse here because I'm going to teach you something tonight that I think ought to give you great comfort if you're a child of God here and you wonder about all these things that are going to come about because God has showed us time and time again that they don't affect us. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you by the time we're done tonight, you're going to have that drilled into your heart and your head that these things don't have nothing to do with us. Though we're going to be here for them if we're alive, if we make it through that, but they don't, they don't have any effect on us. I'm going to show you, plain and simple. Here's a, here's a hint of that verse right here, Deuteronomy 8.15. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint. That's God led them through, right? How about 1 Kings chapter 12? You see a pattern there. These scorpions are for judgment, and most people are going to die by them. Well, they're going to want to die by them. They're not going to die by that crew. They're going to buy, die by the next crew that comes through after that. The first crew, they sting them and make them want to die for five months. The next one just kills everything. First Kings chapter 12, verse number 11. I, you know, they're a picture of judgment. Look what Rehoboam said. He said, and now whereas my father did laid you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father hath chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. See that? With scorpions. Eleven times the Bible talks about scorpions. Eleven times. Why? What does that, that, that number stand for? I'll show you right now. Here it is. That was fast, wasn't it? Uh, judgment and disorder. The number 11 is associated usually with disorder and judgment. All through the Bible, 11 is more than 10. Number 10 represents the law and responsibility. A broken law and responsibility always brings judgment and disorder. The number 11 is used 24 times in the Word of God. There were 11 judgments upon the Egyptians. 11 of them, right? All the way through. There were... 11 apostles, because what happened? One. What did they say? Yeah, but what did they say? One fell. He fell. Judas fell by transgression. 
Where'd he fall? Hmm? So then there was 11. And what did they have to do? They had to elect another one. Why? To have order. To restore the order. There you go. So you see how that is all the way through the scriptures at number 11. It teaches you that same thing. Babel has something to do with the number 11, right? The disorder that was there. All, is it Genesis 11? Is that, is that Babel, Genesis 11? I think it is. I could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot. But I'll check anyway. Jacob, you're not helping me any. You're like falling asleep over there. Wake up. What do you want me to do? Kick you or something? Knock it off. Is it 11? There you go. Right? Disorder. What did God do? He dispersed them. He caused disorder there. Because they tried to what? They tried to put another brick in the wall. Right? And God said, no, you're not going to do that. So you're out of here. Right? They did try to enter some other way. That's right. They tried to build a tower to heaven. Right? So that's the number 11. Do you understand? Are you following me here? You understand that scorpions are 11 times in the King James Bible because they stand for the disorder and judgment of God. So they're in there 11 times. Now, what do these have on them? Let's go back to Revelation chapter 9. I thought this was really interesting because there's a lot of things about this. It says here in Revelation chapter 9, verse, let's see, and the, verse number 9. We're, we're going to get to some of the other things here. Uh, they, well, they had hair as the hair of a woman, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. They had breastplates as a breastplates of iron. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Because that iron has a lot to do with the fourth kingdom, doesn't it? It talks about that. Uh, how about the conscience seared with a hot iron? I think it's interesting that this iron is forged in hell. Don't you think that's interesting? I think it is. Because where'd they get the iron? They made it. And they made it down there. Or they're making it down there. Right? Iron Man. Right? Same thing. Same thing. All that, that's not an accident. None of that stuff is an accident. Right. I've never heard of it, but I believe you. Because they don't, they don't, they tell you what they're doing. Now, they may not know, but the devils know. And that's why they put it in front of your face. Forged in the belly of hell. Then we talk about the fourth kingdom. Iron mixed with clay. Right? So, Egypt was called what? The iron furnace. I, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, because I thought this was interesting. Is this making sense to you tonight? I hope it is. <laughs> it is to me, but I but I followed it along, so I'm doing it by myself here. So I'm like, okay, this has got. To, I hope this is making sense to them here. I think I'm crazy, but you probably do anyway. It's too late for that, right, Ryan? But that's all right. Verse number twenty three. Look at that. What it says here. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. Look at this. And the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Under thee. This is what they're going to wear. I, I, don't think, I don't think you're going to get any bullets through that. Because don't you think people are going to be trying to shoot those? Come on. You know they are. Right? Military, I mean, you know, we're going to have, we're, you know, you, you have an ARs, you'd be like, Pfft. right? Whatever you're trying to go, and that breastplate of iron's like, it ain't moving. It was forged in hell. You ain't, you ain't got nothing hot enough to break that. Right? But we don't need it anyway. But they're going to need it. That isn't going to do them any good. Because they're not going to be able to fight that. How about that term rod of iron? The Bible says that Jesus is going to come back with a rod of iron. Psalm chapter 2 says that Jesus is going to rule and reign on this earth, the, the nations, with a rod of iron. You know, it's four times in the King James Bible. That's the spiritual kingdom. That rod of iron is used. What is he going to use? Jesus is going to take, turn to Revelation chapter 19. Because Jesus is going to take that rod of iron. He's going to use that iron against that iron kingdom. And he's going to destroy them with a rod of iron. His iron from heaven, forged in heaven, right? Revelation chapter 19, verse number 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress 
of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yep. Mm hmm. Yep. Right, and it's impure. Exactly. And it's not pure. No, that's right. Oh, sound of wings. So it says here, it says here, the devil that deceived them. Oh, wrong chapter. That's the end of the story. What a glorious time that'll be. Uh, let's see. It says here in verse number 9, though, Revelation 9, 9, and they had breastplates as it were, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Now, I just want to get you something that kind of sounds like that um, a little bit for you to think about. But I don't know if you can hear it. Luke, is this... How do I get them to hear it? Where are you at, Luke? There you are. Next to that right there. I'm going to block them all. I'll have you do it. All right. Make Scott do stuff. He doesn't. going to go non-stop for five months. Right? Apollyon. The king of the bottomless pit. Now this is an interesting angel. It says here they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue at this name Apollyon. There isn't really a lot about him. There's not a lot that's really said about him, about, about who he really is or whatever. We know that through different Greek mythology and, and different things like that, or um, the Greeks have a god and, and the Jews call him, and the Jews is, in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. So he's the god of, basically the god of the underworld. Okay? So he's in charge down there. I don't know what, how he got there exactly. I'm guessing he was one of the ones that left their first estate. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Because all I know is that he's going to come up out of the pit. And that's where he is right now. And when he comes out, it says here that he's going to lead them. So he's going to rule and reign over them. So. And his authority and great power. Yep. So it. I mean, you're, you're combining the forces of hell with Satan's power to use man to fight against God, which isn't even going to be a close fight, but that's what's going to happen. So there's not a lot about him that, that, that the Bible talks about. This is just kind of a picture that I, that, that I was looking around, and, and I thought, and I typed in Apollyon, and this is what they, they kind of came up with there, which we'll talk about some of those other beasts uh, next week. But anyway, that's, I, I thought it was an interesting picture because it really shows the chaos and the mayhem that is coming. But I want to talk to you about serpents and scorpions because here's the thing. For God's people, we ought not be afraid of any of this. Because Jesus, don't you find it interesting what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse number 19? He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. But what did he just tell you? 
If you're paying attention, then you know Jesus just said serpents and scorpions are spirits. He just said it. He said they're spirits. So he was prophesying about what John was going to write about, which Jesus gave him anyway. I know it's kind of a, but uh, anyway, which Jesus gave him anyway in a vision, but, uh, that, but that's what he was prophesying about. He said that those spirits, those serpents and scorpions, they're spirits. So, I mean, we don't have to worry about them. See, we have this book, and we're going to be like, well, I know what that is. Every, the whole world's going to be losing it. But the Christians are going to be like, but we have a book. And we have a God. And we know what he said. And he said this was going to happen. And we just believe him. And we know what's going to happen to those things. And they can't do nothing to us. That's right. That is why. He says, we don't have to be afraid of these hybrids from hell because he gave us power over them. Here's another witness, Revelation 9, 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. Do you notice it's nothing that's alive? They're not allowed to hurt any life. But the dead. You see that? But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Well, how's God going to keep the rest of the world from all the Christians from all these plagues and all these things? He just said that he was going to do it right there. Just like, just like he did it in Egypt. Well, just, just like he did it in Egypt. How, how was that a miracle? Well, it was a miracle. Absolutely. So is the virgin birth, and I believe that too. Right? I don't know. I mean, if you, if you whittle everything down to that, there ain't nothing more, more absolutely miraculous than the virgin birth. There is nothing more miraculous than that. Nothing. And if you're not old enough, you don't understand that, then just get married. Then you'll figure that out because there'd be nothing more miraculous than the virgin birth. Nothing. Right? Great is the mystery of godliness. So if you can believe the virgin birth, and you do, and you have to, or you're going to hell, but <laughs> and you, you do believe it by God's spirit. That's why you believe it. Now, that might worry some people. They might think I'm getting a little too Calvinist on them there. But I'll go ahead and say that again. You only believe it because God gave you the ability to believe it. Faith is a gift of God. You better believe it is. Faith is a gift of God. Repentance is a gift of God. They are both granted. Amen. Thank God they are because, boy, we're a hot mess, aren't we? Right? If you don't think you're a mess, you just haven't had enough trials yet. Just wait a little while. You'll figure out how much of a mess you are. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? You just got to go through some things to figure out how messy you really are. You still think you're all right? Okay, well, just hang on. <laughs> hang on. God will put you through the grinder a little bit more, allow life to try you a little bit to, tr- to test your faith, and you'll be like, man, you know what? I- I'm just a big mess. <laughs> right? But this says here, again, here's another witness, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So it's going to fly around. It's going to be a weird looking. And all these people are going to see these aliens and these devils and all these other things they call aliens and devils. And all the other things, they're going to be coming around. We're going to be like, well, we know what those are, a bunch of devils. We're just going to look and be like, you're a bunch of devils. We know what you are. Get the hint, Satan. Get away from me, you bunch of devils. I know what you are. Well, you're going to know. The Bible told you what they were. Now, your jaw will drop probably. I mean, we're all going to be a little bit like, no, it's not like it's going to feel good. You're not going to be like, oh, this is great. No, it ain't going to be like some, it's not like it's going to be like, let's get up. No, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be really bad. But that's okay. Right. Seeing the demise. Right. Look at Ezekiel chapter 2, verse number 6. He says to those preachers, he said, he said thou son of man. This, I, I read a lot of Ezekiel, and I really identify with this guy a lot. <laughs> thou son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. That's the curse, right? Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. <laughs> Should have remembered that part. I forgot it. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Amen. Amen. 
He says, don't be afraid of them. You dwell among scorpions. Don't worry. They ain't going to bite you. <laughs> anyway, um, that's, that's Beth Moore. And uh, it's a new, new preacher woman from the SBC. Anyway, so a lot of other things we could talk about, but I think that's good. Uh, I, I think that gives you the start here. Now, we're not going to finish this chapter, obviously. We're going to get into these other creatures here. Uh, I do think it's interesting, though, when we talk, and I didn't, I didn't focus on this a lot, but the shape of the locusts were likened to the horses prepared in battle. We talked about that. Their heads, they got that crown on their head, right? So they, they think they're royalty, and they kind of are. Why? They're sons of princes. Understand that? The princes, principalities, powers, rulers of dark, I mean, they are royalty in that sense. In their own eyes, anyway. Uh, they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings. It says, uh, and they had tails like unto scorpions and their tails. But the Bible talks about them having the hair as the hair of a woman. That means long. Right? They're going to have hair as a woman. Why? Well, because they're going to be this confusion. What is, what is, what is uh, disorder? They've got teeth of a lion, hair of a woman, right? They're different creatures, the face of a man, right? So they are confusion. They are like Baphomet. That's how Satan operates. You see, the beast up in heaven, God's very clear as to what they are. He's clear. Now, they're, they're, they're unique, but these are... Satan's version. These are, these are his armies. That's his version. These are the beasts of the underworld. And there's more to come. And God is going to use them to destroy. But again, we've been told just like Israel was. You know, Jesus said, I gave you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Where, where does that take you back to? Deuteronomy. Remember what he said? I led thee through the wilderness where the fiery serpents and the scorpions were. What did, that's another proof of what the Bible said. What did it say? A prophet like unto Moses shall the Lord your God raise up unto you. Who was it? Jesus. He gave them power over those scorpions and those serpents and those spirits. And he said, you're going to have power over those. He, that's, another, that's another verse proof that Jesus was the promised one to come. You got to match them all together. You got to put them all together. It's like a chain link, you know. There's, there's links everywhere. You got to put them all together, all the way from the Old Testament to the New Testament. So those same plagues are coming right back around again in Revelation. Only it's going to be worse. Amen. So marvel not that you must be born again. You must be saved by the grace of God and have your sins forgiven. Amen. And thank God for forgiveness of sins, and thank God for Jesus. Amen? Thank God for righteousness, because none of that stuff's going to, God's righteousness, because none of these things shall harm you. God says so. They're, they're not, they don't have any effect on God's people. They can't. Why? Because you've already been given power over them. Amen? It was already promised multiple times over and over again. That's why when people preach about it, all right, now I'm going to get in trouble, right? I'm going to get in trouble with the pre-trib stuff. Here goes. All right, here we go. That's why I think, I think they scare a lot of people, to be honest with you. I mean, it's not going to be a fun time. And, of course, it's going to be scary. I'm not saying that. But if we're alive and we're here, the thing is, is that don't forget about all of God's deliverances that he said he was going to do. That he said, I'll deliver you through the wilderness. I, I delivered you through the wilderness. I delivered you from the iron furnace. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Right, and that's why you don't have to worry about it. Right. They, tribulation saints, they would say. Right. Well, 144,000 on the whole earth is not going to be, yeah. Right. Those are the chosen ones of Israel. Those are for Israel, 12,000 each tribe. That's who those 144 are for, Israel. 
God's not done with Israel. That makes a lot of people mad today. Your reform movement don't like that. A lot of your, um, yeah, a lot of those guys don't like that. Right. But they're wicked. Yeah, so are you. But I'm going to tell you something right now. When God makes a promise, he keeps it. Even when you don't. Right. And God said, and God said that he's going to deal with them. And God said, he said what was going to happen. And it's not all figurative in origin's mind. Okay. Origin had this whole, you know, it's all, you know, all allegorical or whatever. Um, Maybe he was allegorical. He was like a cartoon comic book character from the depths of hell. He was a weirdo. Anyway, uh, but he kind of reminds me of this thing. Um, what's that? Mm-hmm. I know. I know. So, and it's all, and, and why are all the nations of the world being pulled down? And why is this embassy going to be in Israel? And why are they making a two-state solution there? And why are they building that two-state solution? And why is Trump going to get reelected so he can push that? And and that Kushner guy and all those other people can go over there and they can push that two-state solution. And why are all the armies instead of, I have a good idea, Trump's going to say, I have a good idea. Let's take all the troops uh, from NATO and all those other and put them on the border of Israel. What does that do? Drag all the nations down to Israel. That's where Satan wants to defile. So anyway, that's another another uh, another topic altogether. But yeah, the whole world's going to be dragged down, dragged down to all the nations of the earth will be dragged down, all of them. Anyway, so hope you learned something. Uh, we'll finish it up next week. The other part of that, and then I'll add also. Uh, may, well, maybe I'll add those other two creatures from Zechariah because I thought that was interesting because. You talk about those, they're female, and it's kind of it, confusing, but that's what it's about, confusion. That's what Satan does. That's what this is, is confusion. Confusion, right? So anyway, uh, let's pray. Father, Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, just being able to explore it, Lord, and to study it out and to learn from it. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to put things together like this and to to reason together, sit down and to look at the scriptures and to learn about you. And thank, thank you, Father, for the promise. Thank you for the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you for Jesus Christ in our souls. And thank you for the salvation, the atonement that was made for us on, the, on Calvary, on the cross, that you died, you were buried, and you rose again from the dead. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to fear any of these things. For we have a Father in heaven. And we have the Spirit of God that dwells in us, that sealed us out of the day of redemption. And, Lord, we know one day you're going to come back and right all wrongs. Oh, God, thank you so much for that. In Jesus' holy name we pray and ask it. Amen.